Hello, I'd like to welcome Geraldine Libro to our conversation today. And Geraldine is a policy officer with the European Commission. Thank you for inviting me. Um, well, my role is to coordinate and uh, help the member states in the European Union uh, to learn from each other in terms of what they do for organizing the systems on early childhood education and care. So for the past two years, I have been uh, coordinating a, a working group with all the member states. Um, and we have been discussing inclusion and professionalization of staff in the field of early childhood education and care. It's exciting and challenging at the same time because we, there are 27 different systems and they are all organized in different ways and they all have their own national language and terms uh, and terminology. Um, cultural approaches also play a very important role in terms of organizing early childhood education and care. And the legislation around that is also very different. In some countries, we have um, the Ministry for Education, which is responsible for the whole organization uh, for looking after children from zero to six. And then in some other countries, you have the Ministry of Education for older children from three to six, and maybe the Ministry of Social Affairs or Families or Employment uh, looking after the children under three. So that already creates a big difference. Um, there are very big differences in terms of approaching as well the value of early childhood education and care and discussing its purpose is it for child care so that parents can go to work or is it for educating children giving them skills uh, promoting inclusion so there are also different approaches um, so there's a big big diversity so a lot of uh, peer learning and a lot of uh, discussions and really exciting discussions sometimes so there was a proposal made in 2014 by a commission expert group who defined what quality would look like um, in early childhood education and care and this proposal was uh, proposed to the member states and in 2019, they adopted it in what we call a council recommendation for high quality ECEC systems. And that signals the fact that all the member states agree with what quality should be, um, and they are trying to reach this quality. So this quality framework is based on five pillars, and we always insist that it's a jigsaw. You can't have two or three pillars and then hope to have quality, you really need to have the five pillars well established to have quality in your system. So the first pillar is about access, making sure that early childhood education and care is accessible, available as a start, and affordable. The second pillar uh, is about staff. We need enough staff and we need well-qualified staff and staff who stay in the profession. Then a third pillar is about curriculum. So making sure that we have a pedagogical framework for early childhood education and care. In a number of countries, we have one for children who are in kindergarten, like above two or three, but there are no pedagogical framework for the younger children. And we think it's important to have them for all children. The fourth pillar is about um, governance and funding. So there needs to be a a right set of governance rules where all the responsibilities are well identified between the national level and the local level, um, where uh, there are good cooperation between the different actors who serve family, and it needs to have adequate funding as well to support also access to early childhood education and care by all families, including vulnerable ones. And the fifth pillar, which is sometimes the most difficult to implement, is about monitoring and evaluation of quality. Um, like every public policy, they need to be evaluated to be, um, to be adapted to the needs, uh, to redirect them if needed. And this is the, the fifth pillar. Once the other four are in place, we need to make sure that they actually answer the needs 
um, of the families, of the children, and that they really help us achieve the objectives that we have with, uh, with uh, the provision of early childhood education and care to all children. So um, about 20 years ago, there was a whole discussion about uh, making sure that childcare was available uh, to support gender equality, to support parents' participation in the labor market and so on. But about 10 years ago, there was a shift, um, well, an, an, an evolution where we really emphasized that um, childcare was not just child care, but was education and care, and that it was important to make sure that this was of high quality, because participating in early childhood education and care had a really big impact on the development of the child, the cognitive development, social, emotional, and so on. And so it had to be, the focus had to be on the child and not on the parents who could go to work. So with this shift in attitude, we uh, used research findings to, uh, to show that participation in uh, quality education and care from an early age is a good investment for the rest of uh, the life of the child, but also for society in general. And based on that, we are trying to develop a whole ecosystem around the concept of quality education and care focused on the child. So this was the, the change in the narrative. So with this working group that um, I worked with for, for the past two years, we, we looked at two different issues. One was, um, okay, one, it was looking at one of the pillars of the European Quality Framework, which is staff. And then the member states said, we have two major challenge, challenges. One is how to raise attractiveness of the profession so that people join the profession and stay in the profession. And the second challenge was about how to make sure that they have the, the right competencies and skills and how can we train them better. So based on that, uh, we looked at research findings, policy recommendations, examples of strategies uh, from the different countries. And we published a report which answers these key questions. Um, so if we look into um, the, the, the attractiveness of the profession, we first want to make sure that the, the profession is, um, is recognized as something extremely valuable. But for that, we need early childhood education and care in general to be recognized as something valuable. So if we take the stand that early childhood education and care fosters inclusion is an educational part of the lifelong learning spectrum, then we need qualified people. So this is already a, a really important part of the narrative as well, to attract people in the profession. Um, then we have looked at different recruitment strategies, how to attract men into the profession, because I guess it's the same all over the world, it's mainly women who work in the sector. Um, also, how can we attract people coming from different communities, cultural backgrounds, and for that, we have, uh, we have suggested a number of strategies looking at experiences from uh, working group members. We also suggest that career opportunities are important to offer so that people stay in the profession and don't get stuck in the same, uh, in the same kind of uh, post for, for all their lives. And very importantly, we look at the importance of offering decent working conditions, and that also means decent salaries, um, but also working conditions in terms of um, support to help, to, help uh, to help staff with getting older, because working with ch young children when you have back problems or when, when the situation is not, uh, the setting is not appropriate, might be difficult and people might leave the profession then. Um, so that's, we have a whole set of ideas on how to make the professions more attractive. And then we looked at uh, staff training and we are proposing a mapping of competencies. So this is a result of a European discussion, which then each member state will adapt to their own needs. But basically we looked at three main categories of 
uh, early childhood education and care staff, who are the assistants, the core practitioners or teachers, and then the leaders or directors of kindergarten. And for each of them, we, we propose a set of competencies that they should have. Um, it relates to working with children, working with parents. It re relates about knowledge on early child development, working in a team, working with external colleagues, other organizations, and so on. And so with this mapping of competencies, we suggest that it can be used uh, to design initial training programs or to identify, uh, to identify training needs uh, for an individual or within teams. And so it gives a basis for people to work with according to their needs, according to the level where they are deciding or funding um, the organization of the system. Um, so this is the mapping of competencies. Then um, we look at the importance for a member state at, at national level to design um, a training strategy. So not to leave it to the goodwill of universities or to the goodwill of employers and so on, but to really uh, put in place incentives and strategies to make sure that people want to join the profession and then have a, a fruitful career afterwards, supported by professional development. So we look at the need to have these global strategies, and then we look at all the different ways to have a, a good um, initial training. And we suggest that work-based learning and induction periods are extremely important. And then we look at all the ways to organize continuing professional development, for instance, using e-learning, which we've all been doing a lot uh, recently, uh, but also looking at teamwork. Uh, we look at what we call professional learning communities when we bring together people to learn together. Um, we look at a whole range of strategies. So with this package, we, we hope to, to help the member states um, find look at their own system, see where they have some weaknesses and maybe find some ideas to address these weaknesses. It would be really about recognizing that early childhood education and care is not just changing nappies. It is really a, a place to give the best chances to all children. And, and I think we need to, um, I'm sure here we'll be talking to, to convinced people, but uh, we really need to, to convince uh, decision makers and, and those who adopt budgets that it's really worth investing in early childhood education and care. Um, which will allow more children to participate in this, to have better quality and to have staff who are happy to stay in the profession and to deliver high quality education and care. So it's the dream is really that the value of early childhood education and care is recognized by everybody. I think we managed to work well and, and achieve what we have achieved because we took time to understand each other, to, to build some trust so that we could share experiences which worked, but also those which didn't work. So I think it's important to, um, to be very open and to, and to be ready to learn from, from each other um, and to agree on a common vision. And then you can discuss together how to get there. But the first thing is, is obviously to agree on a common vision, I would say. Thank you very much for your contributions. And thank you for all the work that you do for early childhood education and, and care. My pleasure. It's fascinating to do.